script that are eliminated or taken out in the sense that you don't have to go through those when certain, in certain forgiveness cases. And a lot of times people will ask me, well how does that fit with the idea that the script is written, which, which is in the, uh, the workbook. Well the script is written really is just meaning that the script is the past, it's written as past tense. And so there will seem to be adjustments and changes as long as there is this experience of time being linear. And these changes are always helpful, there are no accidents in the plan. In this case it was kind of saying there were certain accidents that were happening or chance, but there's no chance in this plan. Nothing is out of place. So there's never something where it's like, oh that wasn't meant to happen. Or that was meant to happen but it didn't happen, it just doesn't go that way. But we could say that the script is written is really just a statement that that all of perception is the past. Kind of like that music video we were listening to today, A Waking Dream, uh, where he was saying that, that the, the future is just the past retold all over again. It's really all the same. And we were talking about this the other night about hypothetical thinking. Whenever you're thinking about the future, or you're thinking about the past, it's all the same. And as long as you think it's different, as long as you think the past is different from the future, then that's what this whole loop, that's what this whole uh, deception is about. It's impossible to accept the atonement and also continue to believe that the future is different from the past. It's just, it's, it's just the script. So, what we're really looking at here is, that's what all this mind training with the workbook's about, is just to come to a realization of the sameness of everything. And that's when you start to get closer and closer to, we could say, the end of choice, because, you know, you start to see more and more and more you have a feeling that, that all the choices in this world are not really different choices. That they're all really the same choice. That's why he says, all the roadways of the world lead to death. It seems, to, in human perception, like there's a lot of options, a lot of possibilities, a lot of potentialities, lots of room for what they were kind of calling free will, but there's no free will in this world, as he says in the clarification of terms. Free will was given to us, means, means God's will for us, or our will, in alignment with God's will. But that's just a, a state of mind. Free will does not involve choice. Choice was invented by the ego. There's no choice in oneness. So there's nothing to choose between in pure oneness. So this trick, this world of opposites, this world of duality, and all these choices that seem to be real choices aren't really real choices. And that's where the anxiety comes in, and that's where the stress comes in, is, is trying to make the right choices in this world, when they're all the same. But if you don't see them as the same, then you get into the struggle about which ones are better, which ones are worse, you know, which ones are higher order choices. Choice whether to have a drink or the choice in a marriage partner. It seems to be a different order <laughs> of choice, but it's all the same. I do. <laughs> so, in the end, that's why guidance is so important, because even if you don't believe that all the choices are the same, the Holy Spirit knows that they are. And when you start to say, like the song today, Decide for me, or Holy Spirit, Decide for God for me, you are giving, you are giving ascendance, you are giving importance 
you are giving your mind to the Holy Spirit, saying, decide for God, for me. And that's why sometimes you have these deja vu feelings, that kind of, you get these flashes of these scenes and scenarios, where maybe it's not so much a perceptual thing, but you have a feeling like, I have been here before. Like that feeling, like, I have been here before. Even though the ego would say, no you haven't. It's brand new. <laughs> First, time. First time in this situation, and you've got this inner feeling like, no, I, there's something really familiar about this. Because it's just the past repeating over and over and over, like in a loop. And you seek to meet new characters and new people all the time, but all they are are just representations of the past of what you believe from the past. So they seem to be different, they seem to have minds of their own, they seem to have thoughts of their own, but the people are really just pictorial representations of attack thoughts, <laughs> of grievances that you still are holding on to. And that's why you never wholly love any person. You know, if you look at all the relationships, that all of them have little slivers of guilt, in there, <coughs> you never say, oh mom, I loved her unconditionally. She never did anything wrong. She was just the perfect mom. <laughs> she was the best mom in the world. She never made a mistake. You know, it just isn't happening because these characters are bits and pieces and fragments from the unconscious mind and as long as they seem to be different, then it's because the ego is in charge, and the ego made them to be different, instead of all the same. So in the end, you know, it's the, you keep zooming towards the atonement, which is simply just seeing that what is the same and what is different. What is the same? All the images of the world are the same. Why are they all the same? Because they're equally unreal. They have absolutely no reality whatsoever. What is different? If I said, all you have to do is, is open up to what is the same and what is different. I just told you what's the same. What is different? Truth. There's nothing Perception. different. It's, no, it's, no, let's not get out of the dream too fast here. <laughs> okay. We'll leave God out of it for a moment. Since God doesn't even know this world, we'll leave God and love out of it. What, if all the images are the same, what is different? Perception. Mind. The ego perception. makes them different. Perception. No, perception's all the same. Ego. No, the ego's... You? Purpose? Mind? Ah! It's the purpose. The ego's purpose and the Holy Spirit's purpose are different. They're so different that they have no meeting point. Never the twain shall meet. In fact, if you bring them together, only one remains. Because it's light and darkness. And, and, and perfect love casts out fear. And so, that's the only distinction. You know how we say, find your calling, find your purpose. It's not like your purpose is to be a worldly purpose, like, oh, I was destined to be a writer, or an actor, or we talked about it like a minstrel. It's, mo it's deeper. It's deeper than the minstrel. There's something underneath the minstrel. There's something underneath the mother, or something underneath the, the painter, or the poet, or the construction worker. <laughs> There's something underneath the lawyer. There's something underneath the teacher of God, the miracle worker. There's something deeper. That's the Holy Spirit's purpose. And the Holy Spirit's purpose and the ego are not the same. They are different. So, this is what we call discernment. So you might say, the whole purpose of this world is simply for discernment. To be able to tell in your mind the difference between the ego and the Holy Spirit. That's usually one of the questions that come up. How do you tell the difference between God's voice and the ego's voice? Hmm. Well, that's really the key. And you might say that Jesus is just an example of, of one who heard only one voice. 
And that's what the atonement is. It's hearing only one voice. No temptations. No, ooh, I don't know about that. <laughs> no hesitations. No doubts. No maybes. No, mm, come see, come saw. No, none of that. It's, it's just pure clarity. That's why Jesus, he didn't really sound really human, did he? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Does that sound like a human being to you? <laughs> Before Abraham was, I am. Does that sound very human? That sounds like atonement speaking. That was the Holy Spirit. You know, that's, that's the certainty of one voice, with no wavering, no deception. And that's why, for a lot of us who've been drawn to Jesus as our, as like this teacher, elder brother, you know, savior, call it whatever you want, there's some kind of deep draw to that, because it's, it's the escape from this world of duality, from this crazy dream of separation, it's, it's the escape hatch. inevitable stuff. And, you know, in the end, it's, it's where this whole thing is heading. There's no conflict in it, you know, because of, of the clarity of it, the certainty of it. And even though, you know, we start off all of our discussions with practical things like, what am I going to do with my life, or I'm facing this decision, or, you know, how am I going to make a living? I've I don't know. I'm disinterested in the world. How can I work anymore if if I have no interest in it? And it's kind of like the, you know Khalil Gibran, you know the prophet. Work with love. Be inspired with everything that you think and say and do. Open your mind. Open your heart up to that inspiration. And that's what we call being done through, you know. So nothing is ripped away, but it's just, you, you're just going for an inspired life, that's all. That's the only, only purpose, is to feel inspired. Inspiritu. Inspired. Mm -hmm.